I'm Rich Bowen, and this is the voice of Apache. I'm in Denver at Community Over Code with Matt Topol, who is a your PMC member on. Yep, I am a PMC member of Apache Iro, uh, contributor. I mostly focus on the C++, the Go, and the Python bindings a lot, um, but also with sub projects. Um, Arrow has several sub projects. Um, but I guess I should first explain what Arrow is. Yeah, let's start with that. What is what is Arrow to the newbie? So Apache Arrow is a it's an in-memory data format. You know, you, you have to distinguish between Arrow the format Arrow and Arrow the project. You have a format spec for how data is laid out in memory for certain data types, and the way it's laid out in memory is identical no matter what programming language implementation you're using or wire protocols, or as you're going from runtimes, and so the, and it's a column-oriented data representation. And so you end up with all the benefits of column-oriented data memory for improving you know, vectorization, SIMD optimizations, and everything's all right there. But it's also really, really useful for passing data between different runtimes because you can do it without any serialization or deserialization costs. You can just hand the raw bytes over and it just okay. works. Matt's recently published a book. This is the second edition, right? Yes. So this is uh, the book that you need if you want to learn more than that three-sentence description. <laughs> yep. Uh, I cover the C++, Python, and Go code samples in there. But the general knowledge about Arrow in here and subprojects is relevant no matter what your preferred programming language is. All right. We were going to talk about subprojects. Yep. So, so tell us about those. So um, Arrow has a RPC framework, Arrow Flight, which is a gRPC service definition that is designed for highly efficient um, data transfer based around streams of Arrow record batches. Um, it utilizes Arrow's IPC interprocess communication format, mm -hmm. which is also heavily utilized for um, very efficient communication. Um, on top of that, built on the framework, there's Arrow Flight SQL which essentially is a full wire protocol for database interactions where the data is transported using arrow data, arrow data using okay. streams of records. Um, and so you, the benefits of that, you know, uh, Dremio actually was the original source of that okay. uh, wire protocol. And they did it because there was an enormous performance benefit over ODBC and JDBC for you know, the standard ways of transporting data because the standard ways of a lot of data transports is all row oriented okay. and arrow flight, because arrow is column oriented, arrow flight and flight SQL are also column oriented because it's arrow data. And so you get some real performance benefits in how the data is transported across the wire and communicated. Then there's also ADBC, which is arrow database connectivity. All right. You know, Similar, same concept as ODBC, JDBC. You have a single sure. client API, and then you have multiple driver implementations. Clients can then just communicate using that one C API, or the bindings for it, and load whichever driver they want. And the benefit there is that interface is all arrow native and column oriented, so because the vast majority of analytics database systems nowadays are all column oriented data compute. And so you have old school ODBC, JDBC, you're all row oriented. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you get data that's column oriented in your database, and you transpose it to rows so you can pass it across the ODBC, JDBC interface. Right. And then half the time, the application just transposes it back in the columns for your data frames. And so by cutting out that tra those transpositions, yeah. you eliminate extra copies. And then there's an enormous performance benefit, sure. especially if you're using a data system that already exports Arrow compatible data. You know, you have Apache Data Fusion was originally a subproject of Arrow and eventually became its own top level Apache project. Yeah. The internal memory representation of Data Fusion is all Arrow and it exposes Arrow Flight SQL interfaces. And so, you know, you get this benefit here of interoperability where all these things can just work together for this highly efficient way of communicating and everything can just kind of work. And so you have things like, you know, um, NVIDIA Rapids and LibQDF. Mm -hmm. 
That's just Arrow on the GPU. Okay. That, that's all it is. That's what they did. They, they, they're using the Arrow data format yeah. on the GPU because of its highly beneficial properties for vectorization, parallelization, SIMD, and so on, which become even more important when you're on GPUs. And then Arrow has the this C data API that is this you know stable ABI for communicating data across runtimes mm -hmm. in Arrow format. And so we contributed to libqdf binding developments so that they can actually export the Arrow data from libqdf while keeping it on the GPU device if you want and not forcing the copy back sure. to the CPU land so that you can hand the data between libraries mm -hmm. and keep it on the GPU the whole time. And so Arrow is just really this really, really useful <laughs> interchange mechanism. You know, if you're familiar with, say, the Polar's data frame library, yeah. its underlying representation is Arrow internally. It's all just Arrow internally. Um, DuckDB's internal representation is almost indistinguishable from Arrow. And so as a result, they have nearly zero copy communication with Arrow interfaces that they provide. And DuckDB actually implemented the ADBC interface. So you can load libduckdb as an ADBC driver. Okay. Uh, currently, we've got Postgres, Snowflake, SQLite. There's an in-progress development on, on Google BigQuery driver. But we're looking for, obviously, we're looking for more contributions and more you know, development of those drivers. Mm -hmm. But also, we want to see more applications adopt leveraging that communication standard that Arrow has for ADBC, where you could simplify communication with data sources by using all Arrow native interoperability communication and swapping out the drivers just like you would for ODBC or JDBC, but okay, sure. keeping it all column native. That so uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot. Um, and uh, so what's what's new and what's left to do? Where can people get involved? Uh, well, I mean, I mean, the obviously the ADBC drivers, as I just mentioned, is a yeah. really important place to get involved. You know, it, ADBC is is really important, but it's only it's its usefulness is determined by people building the drivers for it yeah. and applications developing support to use those drivers. Um, another area that you know we're looking at is better in, interoperability with non CPU devices. You know, right now the Arrow Live Arrow C plus plus and by extension, the languages that are just bindings to that. Yeah. Um, we have a we have a device agnostic API for intera interacting with device memory, but the only concrete implementation in the library right now is NVIDIA CUDA. Yeah. And so it would be really great to see other concrete implementations get contributed, you know, like Apple's Metal or mm -hmm. Vulkan or Rockham or any of the other like GPU li basic libraries yeah. creating um, implementations of that device agnostic interface. Um, there's work that we're doing for expanding Arrow Flight SQL and how useful it is. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing work to make a series of recommendations for how you set Arrow data across HTTP REST interfaces. And then there's also still more, even more work that we're doing with, uh, you know, Arrow, there's Nano Arrow, which is a small, minimal C library designed to be vendored. Okay. Because Lib Arrow C++ is very, very heavy, yeah. and Pi Arrow is very heavy by extension. And so, for if you're in any kind of a memory constrained environment, you can use Nano Arrow. And, and so, like, there's a lot of development still happening there, you know. And all these interop interoperability yeah. standards, and just even the maintenance of, you know, there's definitely still areas where we could probably find more performance. Arrow, the Arrow C++ and its bindings have, you know, this compute engine, Acero, in there. There's a whole data set API. And, you know, that communication with other interoperable libraries like PyTorch and ML Ops and things like that would be really great to see better interoperation with XGBoost would be great. No matter what your level of environment and your level of expertise is, there's probably something that we could benefit from. Not only that, but there's also probably programming languages that don't have bindings or implementations of Arrow. I mean, we have a lot. There is there is a lot of them right now. I think we've got like 20-something programming languages that have Arrow implementations, but there's still some that don't. I mean, someone started a Swift implementation mm -hmm. and then disappeared. And so now we have a half-built half Swift implementation that I would love to see people contribute and contribute to and help build it out. Um, we've got, so I would love to see more contributions to build out a Swift implementation. 
Um, we, you know, there's a lot of development work that people have done. You know, I've done a lot of work on the Go, a lot of implementation. You know, but there's still feature, but across all the implementations, that some of them have certain features of the Arrow spec that they do or don't fully support. And then, so it would be great seeing some of those little gaps yeah. get, get, get filled in by some of the implementations. Um, seeing more languages have bindings for ADDC would be great. I mean, right now we have bindings for R, Ruby, Python, Java, et cetera. But I'm sure there are other languages that would benefit yeah. from having explicit bindings just to make it easier to use them, yeah. you know, for ADDC. So there, 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 there's any number of really cool things that could be contributed and worked on and pushed with Arrow. And it's just, it's such this underpinning foundational technology now that so many systems and libraries depend upon. But if you're not directly building the systems or you're not directly building the tools for those systems, you don't necessarily use Arrow directly, yeah. but you're probably using it indirectly. Sure. Because of things like Polars and Pan Pandas has a PyArrow backend. You know, whether you're using DuckDB, Apache Data Fusion, you're using InfluxDB, you're using Dremio. All these things have arrow or are almost instinctual from arrow okay. benefits there. And so frequently it's harder to find people who actually know about arrow because if you're not the one building those tools and, and, and utilities and data systems, yeah, even though they're you're not using gonna interact, it. Yeah. Not with it directly, but you're still using it and benefiting from it. I did not realize how many things it was behind. That's that's fascinating. Yeah, and that, that's that's the coolest thing I love about arrow is that it's this hidden foundational underpinning of so yeah. many things now and just continuing to grow that because so like the old school big giant single monolithic dbms is being completely disassembled in, the mod, in our ecosystems and you're getting everything becoming more modular and componentized yeah. but the only way that you can do that is if everyone knows how to talk to each other which is where open standards come into play yeah. and when it comes to communicating data across those components and modules arrow is just be an exceptionally performant way to do it. That if every that more and more things are standardizing around Arrow as its communication, as its communication standard, whether you're doing it across the wire, yeah. whether you're doing it shared memory, you know, and it then it enables all of these extra things around it. So if you want to learn more about Arrow, you can uh, check out Matt's book or go to arrow.apache.org. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for that. It was, it was great. good to meet you. It's great talking to you.